Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. Today, I'm interviewing the CEO of LTO Network, Rick Smith, which, uh, which runs a very interesting hybrid blockchain. And I invited him on to talk about his unique project and what it's all about. So thanks, Rick, for coming on. Hey, George. Good to see you, man. Likewise. Um, all right, let's dive right in. Let's start with something simple. First of all, um, LTO Network is labeled as a hybrid blockchain. So what does that mean exactly? Yeah, interesting question. Um, so we've been here in the space since 2017. And we've been working and focusing on governments and business to business relationships since we started. And their main problem was that they didn't want like an IT overhaul from the day one and switch all their applications, which they would work on every day in their day-to-day -day business to execute their processes. So we said, okay, if you want process automation and the, and the, uh, the benefits of blockchain, the real use of data and, and sharing that safe and secure, um, we need to come up with something hybrid where people can start at their own pace, where they can connect their existing systems and basically create a layer in between their existing process management systems, which they're using today. So making the, the connection and the bridges to the real world APIs, but having the benefits of blockchain where everybody can start at their own pace, that was the, the, the benefits and unique selling points that we were going to bring to the world. And like, if you wanna set up a node from day one, you, you basically need to, to have some knowledge about IT and, and some, some are reluctant of, of, of hosting a node themselves. Mm -hmm. What if you could just join a node of somebody else and spin up your own if you want to have the data landed inside your own data infrastructure? So basically every private chain that you connect to with your existing process management system as a company, you get basically an invite to get the data uh, and get a copy of the data uh, from that node into your own node. But you're not obligated to run your own node. You can basically start at your own pace. Interesting. Do you guys offer, because it sounds like obviously businesses that want to get in, it, it's just an easy onboard process, but um, do you guys offer any kind of help or consulting services for businesses that want to do this exactly? We started with that, yes, definitely, because we needed the traction. So we onboarded many customers ourselves as well and did the integrations and mm -hmm. basically cre created a, an, an SDK and tooling around it so that integrators could start doing that. So in 2019, when mm -hmm. our mainnet went live, we started to build SDKs for integrators to use our products to make it easier uh, for them to integrate their clients and have them uh, having the benefits of LTO network. So we went from our own consultancy as well to outsource it to integrators and create partnerships with them to do it for us. And that is when we got the real traction going from just a couple of thousand transactions mm -hmm. to 120,000 on a daily basis. Wow. Yeah, I saw on your website, you guys claim that you're Europe's leading blockchain with what you said, 120,000 transactions, over 60 partners, right? How, how much growth have you guys seen over the years? Yeah, we're, we're doing great. I think uh, we're doing about 30% month a month now. Wow. Uh, and, and we're not losing that traction. We, 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 we're aiming for more. Um, since our recent partnership with the United Nations, um, that, that, that created a lot of buzz for us, but mm -hmm. also we're involved in projects where the transactions are enormous. Think of a land registration system of an entire country that, that, that causes so many transactions on the network. Mm -hmm. And we could never done that with our own consultancy. So we outsource that fully so that we can scale faster. And I think we're on a winning streak here in terms of, um, yeah, the, the right move, the right strategic move to amplify the growth even further. So that's a good lead in because I was going to ask you about some of the partnerships. Obviously, the one with the United Nations is enormous with land registry. Which, which country is it for and is there any plans to expand? 
Yeah, so we did it for Afghanistan. Um, the UN said it, it made the, the most sense there okay. um, because uh, they, had, they, they needed an entire system overhaul. They could start from scratch, from zero. There were a lot of facilities, municipalities destroyed. So there was a lot of unclaimed land or basically disputes of who this ownership and the land titles actually belong to. So they said, okay, let's reissue entire cities again and let's reissue the entire country from scratch. Um, and let's build a system around that and let's make it protective forever. So when the next ISIS or whatever comes that, mm -hmm. that overthrows the, the current regime, mm -hmm. that we could replay all the transactions so we could, without having a problem there, we could reissue the land registration with just one click of a button. Can we do that with your blockchain? I said, yes, definitely we can. So we worked on that for, I think, 18 months. And we're rolling it now at, 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 at super speed. Wow. Um, and and it, it looks absolutely amazing. It has a super cool UI mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, and, and the IT infrastructure underneath it is ob obviously on LTO. Um, uh, all the occupancy certificates are, are issued on LTO, the transfers, everything. And um, what the cool thing is, they said to us, guys, can we make this into a generic boilerplate, run it in, in your GitHub and make it spread across the globe where mm -hmm. everybody can modify their own stuff so that everybody can have a land registration system like this because this is the future of land registration for every, not every uh, third world country, but basically every country in the world upgrades their current systems with, 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 with this, this technology. So um, we're currently working on, um, on making it more like a boilerplate so that it's less like more generic mm -hmm. and less specific than uh, for what we made for Afghanistan. And yeah, there are, there's not one, not two, but more than that countries in the pipeline ready uh, to use it. That's, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing. And if you think about registering land on top of blockchain, right? Especially on a blockchain where <laughs> it's not, you know, it, you can't tamper with it. It's immutable. It's, it's there forever. It just makes a whole lot of sense. I'm just curious, how did, uh, how did United Nations even um, come to you guys or did you guys go to them? How did the connection, you know, how did it start? Yeah. Um, so we have in the Netherlands, uh, um, uh, our embassy and our, our, our kingdom like um, the royals, the Dutch royals are really helpful in the, 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 the scale up and startup ecosystem. So what they do for us is they plan appointments at, uh, like if we would go on a, on a business trip with them uh, to, mm -hmm. to Shanghai or New York or whatever, they would plan the best meetings for us, for us to pitch on certain projects. And one of the projects that we pitched for was the land registration system. Um, and in the in the United Nations office in New York, mm. and um, they chose us uh, to be uh, the collaboration partner to build this together with them. Um, and it is definitely uh, of the help of the embassies and the royals to make this happen. Uh, so we we go on on these business trips together with them, um, and and yeah, this 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 is really fruitful. And, and helpful and that's what's driving the ecosystem uh, further and uh, yeah the United Nations uh, was impressed by our pitch and uh, and and asked us uh, to join the project that's awesome um, what about your other big partner what about IBM what are you guys doing with them yeah so we are actually doing two things with them so we started off with uh, the Watson so um, what was, what was the case? Uh, the Ministry of Justice in the Netherlands mm -hmm. wanted to speed up their, well, called pity, pity crime thefts. So we have about 400,000 cases of, let's say, a stolen bike or shoplifting and stuff like that. But this process are all like kind of the same. So they're, they're really good for automation because if you have a process which is repetitive with just a couple of parameters that are different, mm -hmm. you can use AI. So... That's, that's the cool thing. We said, okay, blockchain can meet AI here because we were running a project for, you, for, uh, for the Ministry of Justice to, to have the data uh, shared between all the stakeholders involved on a, uh, on a criminal process. 
because you have the police, you have victim help, you have mm-hmm. the, 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 you have the, 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 the lawyer, you have the, the, the guy who did it or the girl who did it. So all these stakeholders in the process, mm-hmm. we wanted to basically connect these silos together and mm-hmm. ha- having the data being reused over our hybrid chain. And then uh, Watson came in, they, this was back in 2018, mm-hmm. beginning 19. They said, can we use these process data to analyze it in Watson and basically give the, the judge an example of what he did in the previous thousand cases? So we could put machine learning and blockchain together. So wow. basically, hey, in the last hundred cases, you said a fine of hundred euros was enough for, for a shoplifting of 200 euros uh, or maximum value of 200 euros. And so basically having, so do you want to do a similar um, a fine again? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that you can basically uh, work away those uh, pity crime thefts cases much faster than ever before. And so that, that was super cool. Um, yeah. uh, and, and the other one was with the Internet of Environment, together with VIDT as well, um, basically having uh, sensor data on buildings to measure uh, pollution and stuff like that, um, that that would uh, uh, basically the dashboarding and, and, uh, and, and the sensors that collect the data so that we would have a tamper-proof data collection in the IBM monitoring system, it would anchor on LTO. So that was also a super cool project. And um, yeah, they're looking into uh, to that to, to expand that further also. You're, uh, the, first, the first example you gave about the petty crimes and using Watson, that, that almost reminds me of the movie uh, Mi- Minority Report, you know, with Tom Cruise. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, it, exactly. it's almost like that, using machine learning to process data and kind of be predictive in a way, right? <laughs> yeah, then and then you can prevent the crime before it even happens. Right, right? it's it's wild. It's coming true already. <laughs> um, very cool. So uh, another thing I think that's huge that we haven't touched upon is how your blockchain, your hybrid blockchain, allows um, companies to be GDPR compliant, which is a new data privacy, um, I guess, standard in the EU, a EEA that. Um, that basically gives individuals rights to access, delete, and erase. So can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is a huge problem. I think when this um, regulation was announced, I think the, um, the Consensus Foundation immediately said, we want to have a, 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 like an exemption of this regulation because this is like the, the full contrary on how blockchain is meant to be. Right. <laughs> be. Because data cannot be erased. That was the whole problem. Like, okay, the processor of the data, that is basically every node, needs to erase the data that he just received a copy of. So we said, okay, let's, let's create, like the, the, the two layers we have, is basically we have a private data layer where you can exchange the data between well, only the ones that are involved in the process. So let's say it is a process that involved three stakeholders. Only the three stakeholders would have the copy of that particular case data. And that contains probably personal data as well. Well, this data is visible for only those three participants, but that's not really blockchain safe, right? You can basically with the two two nodes can say, hey, let's, let's erase the data or modify the data and for the, for, 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 the other, for the other ones to be, uh, to be messed up. So what we said, okay, for, for every block of data that is distributed to those other two participants, so the, the one who forges the block in the private chain would uh, broadcast it to the other two nodes that are involved in the process, but also the block hashes with the data inside would be anchored onto the public chain. So we create an extra layer of, of safety Right. That's mm-hmm. why we have a mix of two chains. Um, but the data still needs to be erased. So what we do is in the in the well, what we call it life contracts. So in the process, uh, in the JSON files that are basically mimicking the processes, we create a delete function at the end. So, hey, do you want to erase the data um, when you're done with this process? 
and you can send the request to the other parties to do the same. So in that case, we could delete the data, but as the um, uh, private chain layer is based on a finite state machine, we could always replay the actions that were taking place. So we could say, hey, the process was executed in this way, mm -hmm. but the data has been deleted for GDPR purposes. So we would have the benefit of an immutable process with the steps that have been taken. And, and, and so that is like, that is set in stone, but the data that is personal can be erased. Interesting, interesting. This is one thing that I don't hear really any other company talk about. I mean, any other project I should say. Because there's a lot of projects out there, blockchains that's catering to businesses, but I don't really hear anyone else say, you know, they're GDPR compliant. Um, so it seems like you guys are definitely ahead of the game. Is this something that you already knew was coming? Because I know this, this regulation was 2018. Did you already hear about this in 2017 when you were building out, or this is just something that you guys decided, hey, we need to, you know, implement or uh, or fix right away? Yeah, well, I'm a lawyer from origin, so I knew it like from I, I knew it already. It, it was uh, it, it was on the roll for for many years. Uh -huh. I think 2014, the the, the first uh, legislation uh, proposals were coming into uh, in, in, well into my mailbox. Uh, when uh, when working at Price Waterhouse Cooper, I think it was my last year there. But yeah, so so it was already like pretty known that this would happen and that this would be a major problem for blockchain to basically get clients in the real world. And so we decided basically to make a solution from that from the start um, and and make sure that it's compliant by default. And that what makes us unique, and that's why a lot of multinationals and governments chose LTO network uh, over, let's say, in Ethereum. Um, all right. So uh, two, two more questions. One more is I saw in your uh, roadmap, there is mention about in Q3 of this year, DeFi and um, a tie up with uh, Chainlink. So what, what's your vision for DeFi and why businesses will want to utilize it? Yeah, so so in our in our we have a visionary paper. It it, it is written in two thousand and seventeen. Mm -hmm. um, we we thought what what would be like the road to to full adoption of blockchain, and we said like if it would be adoption in the real world, we would start with simple things like anchoring and then verifiable credentials and then pro sharing process data between stakeholders in a more efficient way, and then like. Latest stage would be like, like, like identification, smart contracts, and, and DeFi. Mm. Um, and what we see in the DeFi space has been exploding. But mm -hmm. what is going to be the death of DeFi is going to be regulation. They're already spot on. Like it's, it's, it's everywhere that DeFi has a problem mm -hmm. if KYC is not there. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what we knew as, as, as a lawyer, I knew that this was going to happen because financial regulators, well, hate having non, no control about, about money, basically. Right. So, so they want to know where money comes from and, and, and where it's spent on. And, that's, and, and they want this monitoring just to prevent anti-money laundering and, 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 well, basically financing of terrorism, stuff like that. And... The anonymity of, of crypto is, is, well, it's on the contrary of that. So we said, let's build a, um, a, a business credential so that uh, uh, basically a business identity that companies can use to get funding out of the market via the crypto space. But in order for DeFi to, to be successful outside of the blockchain sphere itself, you need mm -hmm. to bridge um, uh, the real world to the, to the crypto DI, well, to the crypto world, basically. So we said, okay, a, a, a business identity on uh, to like who, who's able to represent a company and uh, who's the lender of money and where is it used for? Um, you can only do that when, when KYC is seamless and when the credentials can be verified instantly. 
Right. So we said, okay, let's issue basically a business passport, um, which you can use on chain. And, but having that only on LTO would be a problem because not everybody's running an LTO node or having an LTO wallet. Mm -hmm. So we said, let's make it cross chain. How can we do that? We need a partnership with Chainlink so that they would integrate our business credential uh, where you could that could travel to other chains that have an integration with a Chainlink Oracle as well. So that everybody who has a Chainlink um, Oracle integration could have the benefits of LTO business credentials in their wallets. So basically, it doesn't matter whether you're on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, um, Polkadot project, you have instant business identifiers on LTO that you can use and bridge the DeFi world, which you have your DeFi project with the real world with just one click. And, and that is what we're doing in Q3. That's what we're building on. Uh, we already released a note with the DID docs. Um, so yeah, that's going to be huge. And I think it's going to be game changer because regulation is just going to kind of kill it uh, for, for getting it out of outside of the crypto space. That's a really unique way. I mean, I know of Chainlink, but everyone just utilized them for like price feeds. I didn't even know they had this capability to do that, to distribute your basic ID services across multiple chains. That's yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Seems like you guys are definitely ahead of the game. Again, you're, you're I guess you being having a law background, you, you could see all this already, right? You could predict things. Um, all right, uh, last question, um, real simple. Um, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? I just wanna hear what your thoughts are on Bitcoin. I, I'm still extremely bullish. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, Bitcoin is, is for me, it's like the, 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 the new currency of, of the people who, who will make and rule the world. Um, for me, it's the major power shift of the bankers, the lawyers, and all the Gordon Geckos that used to be the, the guys ruling the world right. to, to, to the nerds. Like, like to, 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 the, to the, let's say, well, sorry, Jeff Bezos, but Jeff <laughs> Bezos and Elon Musk's and, and, and the Zuckerberg's and yeah. everybody who just loves internet money. Right. And, 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 and who is basically living inside of a new world in a new digital world. Those guys are the guys who are going to, to give out the, the sheets in the future that's going to rule the world in the future. And, and I think that Bitcoin is, is a perfect fit um, for this new type of people. Uh, and, and basically, yeah, I, I think the power shift will go from bankers to the developers. And uh, maybe it's already, it's already happening, but we see it more because we are inside of our own crypto echo chambers. Mm -hmm. But if I look outside, it's starting to drip feet out there as well. I see also the big guys in the Netherlands now are also the tech entrepreneurs and that are getting more powerful um, than they could ever imagine and more popular as well. Like, like maybe my, my kids, when they grow up, I think they'd rather be a developer than be a banker or a lawyer. And I think that is super cool and, and, and basically Bitcoin is the money of the developers. Interesting perspective. <laughs> Interesting. Um, all right. That, that's all the questions I had for you. Um, Rick, I really appreciate you being on the show. I think a lot of, a lot of people watching this will learn a lot from this interview. So hopefully we could do this again, maybe in the future and get an update on what, you know, uh, on the latest developments for our LTO network. Cool, George. I really like the interview and uh, yeah, let's see uh, if there's a cool follow up and I'll contact you directly, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds good. So again, thank you to Rick and for everyone else watching, make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new and stay tuned for my next video. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.